It was back in January when the city <laughs> of Austin hired a new city manager, Spencer Cronk. And he comes to the city having to hire a police chief. He has to negotiate a new police contract. He has to navigate a rewrite of the city's zoning zone. He has to do a lot. But he's here with us this morning, so we totally appreciate Spencer Cronk of taking the time off to be here with us early in the morning. Good morning to you. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for being here so bright and early. Uh, yesterday, you talked about naming uh, Brian Manley the sole finalist for the search for Austin's police chief. Why name him the sole finalist and then decide later on if you want to open up the job pool? Why not to just open it up right now if you think there's a possibility that there's somebody better out there? In my short time here, I've had a number of conversations with community members and overwhelming the response was, we have a great candidate in front of us. Let's take the time to really see the candidate's vision and hear from the community about what their expectations are for that candidate and then make a determination if it's important to go broader and do a national search. But Brian Manley in his 16 months as interim has been an interim. Mm -hmm. And this is the first time now that we'll be able to hear his vision and have the community weigh in on if he is the right person for the job. Okay. Given your choice personally, what would you like to do? Would you like to give him the job or would you want to open it up to the wider scope? Again, in my two months that I've been here, I have heard from many members of our community, but I haven't heard from everyone. I'm new to Austin and it is critical that I hear from more people. So I really encourage anyone who has an invested interest in the public safety of our city going forward to provide that type of input. What do they want in their next police chief? Is the characteristics that Brian Manley provides the city the right ones for our city moving forward? So via text, coming to our town halls, uh, via email, we'll have panel discussions. These are ways that the community can weigh in on that determination. Does the police contract weigh in at all with your decision on who you want to head at the police department? Because we know that they are without a contract right now, and that's something that um, a lot of people are discussing because some people thought that was a done deal. But then you had people who gave pushback and said, not so fast here. So this too is not a done deal with um, Mr. Manley, but how much does that contract weigh when it comes to naming a police chief? It doesn't. I have many executive appointments, as you mentioned, that I have to decide on in the next few months. I'm looking for leaders that are authentic, that are able to engage in our community, and really provide the leadership skills that Austin needs for the future. Those are the characteristics that I looked for when I decided to put Brian Manley as the lone candidate in this position. So it is not part of, there are many issues that the city was facing, as you described, yeah. and I just have to make sure that we are tackling each one on their own. You mentioned that you have uh, a lot of executive appointments yeah. to make, <laughs> and this is because a lot of these positions were held open while they chose a city manager. Yeah. How, how heavy has that load been for you, starting in a new job, and you need to hire not just a, a police chief, but all of yeah. these other department heads? <laughs> Is That's it what you expected coming in? <laughs> it is what I expected, yeah. uh, but I have to say that Austinites have been very welcoming to me. And so even though there was a lot on my plate, a lot that the city has been dealing with in the, in the last few years, mm -hmm. we are growing quickly. And with a growing city comes big city challenges. And I am honored to be part of that uh, opportunity to ensure that we are making the right decisions for the future of our city. Would it be easier though, if you didn't have so many positions to fill? Sure, <laughs> yeah. right. but it's one of those where I see it as an opportunity to ensure that the team that I'm surrounding myself with are lined up with the expectations that I have and embody the characteristics that uh, were present when the city and council decided to put me in board. And so I really appreciate that opportunity as well. And you, and you want to work quickly and efficiently because like yeah. you said, these positions have been left open for quite yeah. some time. So do you have your own timetable and timeline to say, okay, by this time next year, we're going to have this filled. When are we going to have a permanent police chief in your opinion? The sooner the better, but again, I need to take the time that's needed uh, in order to ensure that the community can weigh in in that conversation. So as I said before, I'm not ruling out a national search, and if mm -hmm. I need to do that, I will do that. And if that takes a year, that's fine, because in the end, the city needs to have the right person in that job. That's the bottom line. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to bring up the, the police contract again, and one of the issues that we have heard is that police officers have a hard time being able to afford to live in the city that they mm. police. Mm -hmm. As the city manager and the person who negotiates this contract, is it important for you to have these officers live in the communities where they work? 
That's a tough question because every situation is unique and I think it's really important that as we grow, we are reflective of the community that we serve. And so with all city employees, I wanna make sure that the diversity of the city employees reflect who we are serving as our constituents. Mm -hmm. So whether they live in the city or nearby, um, as long as they're reflective of the city, that's more important than me. Last question, because I, I know that you have to leave, but could it also be a reflection of the high cost of living in the city <laughs> and how Code Next could come in and, and maybe shame, change that with affordable housing? Sure. So my question to you, Mr. Kronk, is do you think Code Next should be up to the voters? That's a tough question. The state constitution is very clear in ensuring that zoning is not the purview of the voters. And so our city uh, council voted the down to not have that in ordinance. Uh, but again, this is an important conversation for our community to have about how we manage growth in the future. Code Next is a piece of that, but there are many other tools and policies that can be in place in how we better manage growth. So there's a possibility, you're not gonna rule that out, that it could be on a ballot. It is not legally, in our opinion, the right decision. Okay. A lot of stuff would have to change. Spencer Kronk, thank you very thank much. You. Appreciate My you pleasure. taking the yeah. time.